What up, YouTube? Um, it's MDL. I'm finally back for another video. I know everybody's been itching for one. So, um, I'm sorry it's been a while. I've been really busy just, just, just working. It's been all music. I haven't been slacking at all. I'm finishing up some paperwork for, uh, for some stuff. For some really good stuff, which I'll, which I'll tell you guys about very soon. Alright guys, so today I'm just going to be doing something from scratch, just for you guys. Um, I have a bunch of old beats on there, or some new ones that I could just remake, but I want to do something just just for like the YouTube audience, so this is going to be all off the dome, as they say. So let's, uh, let's get into it. Alright, so now we are opening FL, better known as Fruity Loops. Um, I'm just going to be... Making a drum loop in here actually, which is what I like to do a lot, is build a construct a drum loop in FL and then um, import it into a uh, Nuendo or Cubase, whatever. Um, so. And the uh, tap tempo in FL is great. Um, that and the browser are my favorite, are my favorite things about it. Um, of course, the pattern pattern sequencer, it's really easy for making drums. Alright, so um, I'm pretty happy with that loop. Um, it's not fully done, I'm going to bring it into the window and probably add a few more percussion elements, but uh, then I'm going to start building all the melodic stuff, so let's uh, do that. Okay, so I'm sure most of you who use FL know how to, how to do this, but if you don't, I'll show you how to track things separately. So I'm um, just saving in a folder called Tracked Files. I'm going to say untitled because I'm going to rename them once I import them. Then just uh, make sure you don't disable the max poly because um, sometimes you want uh, your, your drums to just have a polyphony of one. So, But if you don't, you can disable it. But just make sure um, HQ for all plugins. Um, I like to export it pretty high quality. So, But yeah, the main thing, you just want to make sure that it's you check the box that says split mixer tracks. That's pretty much it, and then uh, 16 bits fine. Um, and then the looping mode. Sometimes you might want to leave the remainder at rapid, but usually I cut it. So I'm gonna start. And just take a second. Yup, like you always want to be organized. So a lot of people don't name their tracks, but I find it extremely difficult to mix and arrange if I don't. So I'm gonna solo each one and name them. This will be snare one, snare two, perk one, short for percussion. Okay, so um, another thing is that Right now everything, I have a lot of drums layered, so everything's really loud, it's kind of clipping. So, you always want to make sure you have a lot of headroom. So, when it comes mastering time, um, the mastering doesn't over, over push anything. Um, it'll, it'll sound clean. Um, so, I'm just going to take this down a lot. Some people may say, wow, you're taking it down like a lot, but it's much better like this. I'm going to take down minus, minus 9 dBs, so... 
Basically, you don't want anything hitting over six. Okay, now um, I'm pretty happy with the uh, drums. Um, I'm going to uh, usually to come up with chords and melodies and stuff. I load up a, a piano and just play around with it. Sometimes I keep it in the track. Sometimes I don't. But it's a it's a great way to come up with you know chord structures and stuff because it's a, it's a very clean instrument. It allows you to to hear everything.
much it. This is like the hook kind of, kind of skeleton. Usually I'll build down from there when I like arrange it into verses. I'll take stuff away, but I like to build everything, have the most stuff in there. So I'm going to put in a few more elements, and then I'll show it to you guys, and then, uh, yeah, it'll pretty much be a wrap. I don't know. That's not going in the video, but that's, that's what they're gonna say. You